Hey everyone, King and Sergeant Steel here, and today we are talking about everyone's favorite, the Bulgren. Now the Bulgren are one of the coolest, most unique units in the Astro Militarum. I'm very excited about this unit. I've loved them since I've started playing. As you can see, I have many of them, way more than I have Ogrens, even though I now love our Ogrens too. Uh, but when these first came out, they were really the hotness of Guard, Elites, and they still remain that way till today. Um, though I am filming this pre-codex, so there may be some changes. Uh, so we're talking about the index rules currently, but if these stay the same, then this will still be the same video. It'll still be available. But let's dive into it and talk about why this unit is so awesome. As always, we start out with their stat line. We have movement six, toughness six. Toughness six, that means even a heavy bolter is wounding these on fives. We have a four up armor save, three wounds, leadership seven, and OC one. Pretty typical for a non-battle line profile in terms of OC and leadership and everything, but that toughness six is really what seals the deal on this unit. Now, let's talk about their war gear. They have a ranged weapon option, which is the Grenadier Gauntlet. So it is Blast, 18 inch range, D6 attacks, Ballistic Skill 4, Strength 4, no AP, 1 damage. So it's basically just a grenade launcher, just a frag grenade launcher, right? It's nothing special and it'll do some damage to some very light infantry. And that's about it. It's it's not the most effective weapon, and I really wish they would kind of beef this up a little bit, and maybe we'll see that in the new codex. But that is their only ranged attack option now in 10th edition. Melee weapons, we have the Bulgrim Maul. Uh, so that is an absolute classic, right? Uh, they're kind of electrically charged uh, beat stick, and it is melee, four attacks, weapon skill three. Strength seven minus one flat two damage. So it's the old auto cannon profile, but as a melee weapon and with four attacks. Hitting on threes is really good too. I mean, you're you're really gonna be able to <laughs> smack some people around, and we'll get to that more in a moment. Then, if you don't take the Bulgren Maul, uh, you do have the option of just a close combat weapon, which is also four attacks, weapon skill three, strength six. So that's not terrible. No AP, one damage. So even if you take the Bulgren Maul, or or you take, sorry, the Grenadier Gauntlet, and you do not take the Bulgren Maul, because you got to do one or the other, then you still have a decent melee profile. No AP and one damage, though. So once again, you're clearing out the chaff, you're clearing out light infantry, you're not taking out the elites necessarily. Let talk, let's talk about what makes this unit so special, though, besides its toughness six. It does have a feel no pain, six up. That's really good. So one out of six of those wounds, you're just going to shrug right off. But let's add that in to its unit ability, which is called Wall of Muscle. Each time an attack is allocated to a model in this unit, subtract one from the damage characteristic of that attack to a minimum of one. So that means even if somebody does shoot a heavy bolter at you, and it wounds, and it gets past your armor save, you've taken that two damage weapon down to a one damage weapon on a three wound model. So trying to, and that's what starts to make this unit so special, trying to whittle this unit down is going to be very hard. Even if you put auto cannons into them, which are damage three, you will not take out a model. You just won't do it. So let's talk about their other war gear real quick, because uh, it'll all tie into this resiliency, uh, which is really what this unit's trait is. Brute shield. So we're talking about this right here, the small shield uh, that you can take on them. And the bear has a four plus invulnerable save. So that's basically like your force field type shield and gives them a four up invulnerable in addition to a four up armor save, which is really good uh so if you were to take a unit of these and you just had a bunch of involved saves on them even ap weapons don't matter but you're only saving half of the time with a four up save so you still got to think about that but you're reducing your damage your opponent's going to have to feed a lot of shots into this unit then there's the slab shield which is how most of mine are kind of built and I also even have one here it's magnetized it goes on the 
uh, brute shield options. So the slab shield, though, in 10th edition, the bear has a wounds characteristic of four. So you go from three wounds to four wounds. Now let's think about that real quick. So let's talk about the strategy and why this unit's so great. So we have a six up fill no pain. We have reduced damage characteristic of attacks by one to a minimum of one. You have the option of a four up and vulnerable save or an extra wound on each model. Then you're already toughness six with a four up armor. Likely, um, because of terrain rules and 10th, it'll be easy for you to gain cover. So it'll be easy for you to find a three up armor save if you really want it. Um, so this unit can really just be kind of thrown out there and stick around. I mean, your opponent is going to be dedicating firepower and melee to clear this unit. And with toughness six, that means small arms fire, right? Las guns, auto guns. They're going to be wounding this unit on sixes. So even if you try to get around the uh, high toughness and damage reduction with a bunch of small arms, well, you're going to have a really tough time wounding this unit with those small arms, right? And that's the way guard plays. We often try to use weight of dice to get around our opponent's tough units. And there's nothing wrong with that. But with this unit, it's just going to be that much harder. It's going to be that much harder to kind of clear them out. And then if you're using stronger weapons, you're going to have to use something as a, like an auto cannon to really be effective against this unit. And then even then, usually weapons like the auto cannon are only two shots or one shot if they're stronger than an auto cannon. So now your opponent is having to dedicate a lot of what would be maybe even anti-vehicle fire into this unit to effectively take them off the table. That is what makes this unit so good. So you can get them in there, put them into a location, and they're going to hang out. They're going to stick around, and your opponent's going to have to really work to take them out. And that's what I think their big asset is. They're, they're great at either screening or holding objectives and really getting in there. Now, they're not bad at melee either, and that's where I love using them, And what, which is why most of mine have the Wulgren balls uh, that they're modeled with. With that, four attacks each. You can take this unit either in three or six model groups, right? So uh, you could have up to 12 of these, or sorry, six of these. Okay, that is 24 melee attacks. Hitting on threes at strength seven, minus one, two damage. That's a lot of dead space marines. I mean, seriously, if you hit a wall of intercessors with that many melee attacks, you are going to punish your opponent. Now, if your goal is to be effective with this unit in terms of like you want to buff them up and they're really key to your strategy, there's only one unit currently, pre-codex 10th edition, that can buff this unit, and that is Lord Solar Leontis. Because this unit does not have the regiment or squadron keyword, so the only thing that can issue Bulgren's orders is Lord Solar. Now, there's three different orders, I think, Oh, really four that could come in handy um, most of the time. So you could give them uh, the plus one objective controlled characteristic just to help prevent your opponent because the max you're ever going to get is OC6, with six models at OC1, right? So by giving them an extra one, now you're OC12, and you can start to kind of threaten your opponent on holding an objective. Uh, what's kind of more likely is you could give them take cover. That gives them a three up armor save. Not bad. Now that's a straight up three up armor save without cover. So then if you have cover uh, and your opponent has AP minus one, you're still at a three up armor save. <laughs> and you're still sticking around and there's not a whole lot your opponent can do about it. Next is the plus one weapon skill, which is devastating, right? So at that point, you're hitting on twos, up to 24 attacks, hitting on twos at strength seven. So you're probably wounding on threes, if not better, um, at AP minus one, two damage. You would shred Space Marines with a six-man unit of Bulgren. And last could be move, move, move. They only have a six-inch movement. The move, move, move could really help them to get in position, help screen or capture objectives. And so I think that's a always a good one to keep in the back of your mind for any unit in your Astro Militarum army. So it's something you want to be thinking about. 
So how would I run this unit, right? How would I recommend doing it? Well, first, not take the Grenadier Gauntlets. I normally don't get on my channel and tell you that something is bad or not to use it. I really just wouldn't use Grenadier Gauntlets unless, unless your strategy is to run a vehicle heavy list, right? And so maybe, and for whatever reason, in that vehicle heavy list, you don't have a whole lot of like anti like light infantry then the Grenadier Gauntlet would be a good choice. However, I think in the Guard, we have a lot better options. And so this would be one of those times I would just almost never recommend taking the Grenadier Gauntlets. Instead, I would almost always recommend the Bulgren Malls and taking those. I would also recommend either or the Brute Shield or the Slab Shield. I think the extra wound with the Slab Shield is really good. Um, like I said, even if your opponent does use a high AP, high damage weapon against your Bulgren, those are high damage, high AP weapons they're not using against your Sentinels and your Rogodorns and your Lehman Russes and so forth, right? They're dedicating major firepower to take out an infantry unit. And so sometimes it's okay just to sack, you know, soak those shots up. And that extra wound, that means even then, with the damage reduction of Feel No Pain, uh, it's going to take an auto cannon hitting twice, wounding twice, and you making none of your Feel No Pains to take out one model. To take out one model on a potential six-man unit, right? That's a lot of firepower being dedicated to that. And your opponent's going to get very annoyed very quickly <laughs> trying to take this unit out. Um, so I think that extra wound could be really good. But the four pinball and save, is also really great. So just in case they do have something, um, say like we have in our army, right? We have the uh, Vulcan Megabolter on the Macarius Vulcan and other units. They could dedicate that in there. Although then they're losing their two damage down to one damage, but they have AP minus two on it. AP minus two could be pretty devastating against a unit like this. Uh, so that four up in save then just makes that twice as annoying. And now you're no matter what getting a four up save, there's nothing your opponent can do about it hardly. Um, so it's another way, and I, I don't think you can go wrong either way. I think there's pros and cons to both options, and they both have their role. Maybe even you take a unit of three with the Brute Shield and a unit of three with the Slab Shield, um, and so forth. Or maybe you mix in one uh, Brute Shield in the unit and the rest are Slab Shields, and that's just in case your opponent does have a big piece of like anti-vehicle you know, shots or firing into it, and you try to tank a few of those with your Invulnerable Safe here. Now, I just want to note about that real quick about the model is that they're very easy to magnetize. So you, I just got like a little bit of green stuff and a magnet in there, and then I can quickly, well, I can't see you this far away from the camera, do to do, quickly swap out your shields if you want to. And that also makes them a little bit addition proof, which is really great to do. Uh, so something really easy that you can do to kind of make your models addition proof or so you can swap them out based upon whatever needs you have, and you don't have to buy a bunch of extra ones like I used to do, which is why I have so many, and uh, give them all the weapon options. Uh, so back to the unit and using it, I would, you know, they're great, in, they're okay in transports. This is a very expensive unit, so I don't know if I would dedicate another 70 points from a Chimera right now in this in 10th edition to uh, transport them. Uh, provided I just said a points cost that could change this is December 2024. I could go up or down and we'll see. Um, but with that, you know, you could dedicate a transport to them and help them move around. The larger transports are great. The Crassus, the uh, Stormlord and so forth are really good, too, for a unit like this to move them up. Uh, Valkyries used to be in older editions, one of my favorite ways to move Bulgren. Uh, but now the Valkyrie is very expensive. So th that's usually not something folks are going to do either anymore. Um uh, with that, they're they're fine on their own. They're so resilient. You you start them out behind a, like a little piece of terrain, right? And then you so this way they're kind of out of line of sight and everything at the beginning. And then you just charge up into wherever you want to go into the table. And that's a fine approach as well, and something that you can do in your games. And that's that's usually how I run them. And I get up there, and oftentimes I'll try to target the kind of like single units on the flank, um, or I'll tar pit the middle, one of the two. So with the units on a flank, I'll try to take out the infantry or elites uh, using my Bulgren Mauls, right? I'll go up there and I'll just boop them right on the head uh, and get rid of those units. 
or I'll go up in the middle and I'll try to tar pit, especially if I'm running units of six uh, with slab shields. I'll just get in there and hold it down and then my opponent will dedicate a bunch of units to trying to shift this off the objective. And then I will just use fields of fire, not the strategy, I'm just like the tactic of coming in and shooting at them from multiple sides and punishing them uh, for making that choice. So that's really it with this unit. They're just really good at sticking around and they're not bad at melee. So your opponent really doesn't want to get a melee with them either because you could make them regret that very quickly. And your opponent's going to have to dedicate a lot of resources to getting rid of the unit. And that's a downside too. So this is almost like a distraction card effects for the guard, but it is also a threat, uh, which is really nice. So it's just a unit that I do highly recommend and I think is really great to have in your list. We see it a lot in competitive lists currently in 10th edition. So we do know it's a very competitive unit, but in terms of modeling and lore wise, I think it's a beautiful unit. I absolutely love this unit. I'm so glad they added it to the Astro Militarum because uh, it used to be back in the day, we only had Ogrens. And then they gave us Bulgrins when they updated the kit. And I really love this kit. So much great detail to paint up on these models. The other thing I want to highlight real quick is you'll notice I have a few models that look a little odd. All right, I have one here that's got like a power fist option and his slab shield. And I have another one that has no arm at all and a Bulgrin ball. And that is because I kit bash these from the Necromunda models. So they do have Ogrens um, and Necromunda. And basically I took those and I just kind of added pieces or cut them up and kit bashed them a little bit to make my own custom kind of uh, Bulgrin here. And I really love them. I, I love how they look. I usually run this one without the arm as if it has a brute shield. So as if it has an invuln save, like maybe this is a force field generator. <laughs> so it's another model to do that. And this one here, I will run as if it's got a, a, a you know, a mall, a Bulgren mall. And so it goes in there and, and boops folks uh, with its power fist that way. Uh, or I will often use this as a character, my Ogren bodyguard. And same with this one, a loyal bodyguard who either has an invuln save or has the extra uh, wound. Uh, depending on uh, the rules for the Ogre and Bodyguard model as well, uh, which is a separate unit, uh, separate data sheet in our codex. So I do think there's a lot of modeling options beyond the initial kit, and those Necromonda models are just beautiful and have so much detail to them. Uh, that's what gives us this cool little D-ring here, this cool little hook on the front. It also gives us this neat little like power pack, stem pack thing that's on the front here with the handle that they can crank and kind of give himself that little boost uh, <laughs> while they're fighting and so forth, which is really, really neat. Uh, so I, I really love this kit. I also love the heads and I love how much skin there is on these models too. Uh, so you could, this is a great way to practice painting your skin tones and also the various detail on your skin, uh, which I love like this one here, darker skin tone. And I kind of did some highlights there to show the, the Aquila brand that is on that one's arm. And this one here, it's got scars and studs. And so I just took time to kind of highlight those a little bit more as well. Uh, and I think this is really fun. This one with the lighter skin, I had fun making him just look dirty and just really ugly. Um, so I had a blast doing that as well. All right, that's all I have for today. So I hope you all enjoyed this unit review and learned a little bit about why the Bullgreens are really so amazing. It's such a great unit. It's something we should all consider having in our Astro Militarum army. Uh, it's one thing I love about the Guard. We have such a diverse army, and we have so many great options, and so many different ways to build lists. We're probably one of the most diverse armies in all of Warhammer 40,000. Um, so that's really something great to keep in mind, because even Space Marines don't have cheap, you know, light infantry units the way we do. Uh, scouts are one thing, but they're still not light infantry the way that we have Cadians and Krieg and so forth. So, and I think the Bulgrins and Ogrins really add to that diversity a lot. And they're a really great elite unit for that. So that's it. That's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I know only half of you do. So I, I watch those metrics and, and I appreciate each of you who are not subscribed watching and the subscribers who come back. But if you're not subscribed, please do uh, or like the video and comment down below. Let me know maybe what I missed or what your thoughts are about the Bulgrins and maybe how you run them or what you might recommend. Do you use transports or do you run them up the middle? Do you put them in strategic reserves and come in off the flank to surprise an opponent um, and then hit them with the Bulgur Malls, perhaps? Or maybe you disagree with me about the Grenadier Gauntlets and you think those are an excellent choice because of Blast and that helps with clearing out the light infantry units from the table and the objectives. Um, 
So yeah, just let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. Uh, the more we talk about the game, the more we learn. The more we learn, the better we play, and the better we play, the more fun we all have together. So um, it's for the benefit of our greater community. So I'd love to hear from you all down there. Um, but as always, have fun wargaming. And remember, Cadia stands. Thank you.